Well, are you ready to manifest? Are you ready to create the life that you were intended to live? Are you ready is the key question right now as we're thinking about the possibilities that unfold for us in the journey of our life. But the key is, are you ready? And that preparation is so essential because if you're not ready, you'll be passed by or left behind. We find this illustrated and sometimes uh, misinterpreted when we talk about the Christ consciousness coming again. We find many traditions talking about Jesus coming once again in the clouds, as if a physical body is coming in the clouds riding on a horse. And all the complications with what that might be is saying, well, if Jesus arrives in Jerusalem first, well, will the people in New York or China understand that he's already arrived? And so it is in the physical context, the literalism of the passage, that creates so much difficulty for us. But you see, it was never meant to be taken literally. What it's describing for us is that that Christ consciousness, that same mind, that same way of thinking, that same awareness that was found in Jesus is coming again and available for you. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, the Scripture says, is that wonderful invitation that the very consciousness, the awareness, the thinking, the understanding that Jesus had is available to you if you're ready. If not, you may be left behind, not left behind in the sense of left behind for all eternity or be gone, uh, left behind to some sort of eternal punishment that the fear-based religions may want to bring about, that someone is left behind only to face tribulation and suffering. On goes the list of things that are fear-based that many fundamentalists want to bring about. I grew up in that, uh, in that uh, tradition where there was a lot of fear that Jesus may come one day. So there were those who preached back in 1960. Jesus was coming in 1962, and Jesus didn't come. And then there were those who said Jesus is coming in 68. 72 was a guaranteed year. Six, Jesus is coming in the clouds. 79, oh, uh, the panic that came to our lives because Jesus was coming any day. And in 1985, and on goes the list. We could go on and on with people saying Jesus was coming, and you'll be left behind with a fear-based approach and a manipulation to say, come to our church and believe the way we do. But yet, here's what the Scripture has been talking about, is us spiritually preparing for an awareness of this powerful consciousness coming each and every day to our lives and arriving here and right now. We're coming in the clouds, meaning a higher consciousness, in a way of the heavens unfolding for us, which means that greater awakening to the divine coming in that environment with a sound of a trumpet, that awakening sound within our lives that goes, aha, now I get it. Aha, I understand. I announce with the sound of trumpets within my heart and life that I got this consciousness. I receive it now. I welcome it. And I'm not left behind. I'm going forward. I'm going to be, shall we say, raptured up into that wonderful realm of enlightenment, of understanding the spiritual truth. In that, there is no fear. But there is only a welcoming, powering message for our lives that simply say, let's get our lives ready to manifest. Let's get our lives ready to receive this Christ consciousness. Let's get our lives ready that the mind of Christ, the very thinking of Christ, be our thinking as well, our way of embracing every day and how to live our life and how important that is. So the key is getting ready. Now people will say, well, Pastor, I, I am ready but I'm just not able to manifest, to bring about, to create. Uh, it doesn't work for me like it's working for so many others. We look around to see those who are participating in this very teaching of Jesus, this very teaching of being co-creators in our world, and finding that they are manifesting amazing things. And they're telling their stories in testimony after testimony, how as they stepped out in believing, God provided, God made a way when there seems to be no way. And boy, do we know that here at City of Light. We know, for we've experienced time and time again, God making a way when there seemed to be no way, manifesting the answers to our very needs. When we face challenges and obstacles, we began to just believe, and in that power of believing, the miraculous unfolded for us. There's just too many stories to go on and on. The stories of City of Light and this ministry experiencing the manifesting power. Well, we too can experience that on a day-to-day -day individual basis. But the reason most people don't manifest easily is this. It just comes down to a resistance of the subconscious mind, that deeper mind, that center of believing deep within us. You know, there's two parts to our mind. There's sort of a, 
the day-to-day -day surface mind, the monkey chatter that's going through our minds that talks about, oh, did I pay that bill? What am I doing for lunch? Where am I going after church? Who, what are you wearing? What's going on here? And what's the pastor talking about? You know, that monkey chatter that goes on in our minds. And then there's that deeper sense, that deeper level, that subconscious, where we operate. And you know what? Your subconscious is controlling your breathing right now. You are, it's like a wonderful computer system that's at work, but it's filled with the information that you've been putting inside it okay, that you've been downloading. Our problem is we've been downloading some things that create resistance to the power of manifesting within our lives. And though that it is, should be so simple and easy that we're walking in great faith and we're believing so, but we've got this sort of misconnect. So our subconscious mind has to be in alignment with our conscious mind. So the subconscious mind, the power of your believing, has to align with the desires of your heart. Because I know there's many of you who say, I believe all things are possible, and you voice it. And then deep down inside, well, not all things, because there's some things I don't believe are possible. You know, I believe my prosperity is there for me that God wants to, well, not really. God doesn't really want to bless me, but, you know, we could bless some, and sometimes there's a blessing. You know, I see that argument that's going on between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind, where your real beliefs are. And some of your beliefs are saying, you know, well, I know that God heals, but... I don't really believe that God really heals everybody or that healing is really possible. And sometimes there's a healing because of some medical miracle. But, eh, you know, and that's an argument that's going on. So you're not manifesting. You're not in alignment. You're not in full agreement. Your thoughts in your conscious mind and your subconscious mind are not coming together. And so in that conflict, what's happening is you're not able to manifest you're not able to create. And so this is what's describing the power of believing of great faith is when the thought in the conscious mind is in full agreement with the base, the deeper subconscious of the power of your beliefs, those deeper beliefs. So what we've got to do is really work on creating a foundation for our spiritual life, something that's strong that you build on. You know, every house needs a strong foundation, a firm foundation. We may sing this, God is a firm foundation in my life. Okay, but do you believe that? Let's create that firm foundation. And how do you do that? Well, we've got to do some work with the subconscious mind, that center of our beliefs and our center of our inner knowing that subconscious mind that controls and operates and freely within our life, we've got to change some thoughts in there. And what we've got to do is replace those fear-based, doubting, questioning, wondering places with more dominating thoughts. Dominating thoughts, thoughts that are greater than, thoughts that really then begin to transform and change the soil of the subconscious to be a place where you can plant thoughts, plant seeds, place them in there, and they're going to be nurtured, growing, and development. Because what you want to do is plant enough seeds that have sown so much that they sort of take over and choke out everything else. Now, I don't know if you know about that, but there's those who are in the landscaping business who go about planting so many seeds in grass that it sort of chokes out every weed. There's no room. And there are those who would say, you know, we need to plant so many plants that they create a ground cover, that there's no space for weeds to pop up and grow through. Well, that's what we need to do in our spiritual life. We're creating a foundation by imparting so many dominant, greater than, power thoughts, thoughts that say, this I know to be true. This I believe with all my mind, heart, and soul. This I know that God, all things are possible. This I know and believe and operate from that God's intention for me is my highest and best. And when we begin to impart enough of that, we begin to change, and there becomes an alignment that when you begin to say, I believe that God is in the blessing business, the subconscious goes, uh-huh, I know that. You've imparted that. You've planted enough seeds. Uh-huh, that's going to be your reality. That's going to be, it's a match. Bingo. We've got it. A match made in heaven. What happens then is what we're actually doing is laying down a pipeline that we can sort of tap into the universal source of supply and allow that pipeline just to bring infinite blessings to our lives. I know so many people come to me and say, you constantly talk about abundance and blessing and all that stuff. You know, God didn't intend for us to do that. You know, God wants us to suffer. 
God wants to see us struggle. God didn't intend to push you on this earth, you know, so you might endure some poverty and maybe a little hunger and lack. What? Where do we get these ideas? But so many of us embrace them and hold dear to their, their hearts, this kind of thinking. And what happens then is they've created a pipeline for negativity rather than a pipeline for divine flow. So we want to understand that divine flow is the all good. Would you ever think for a moment that a God who loves you, that God who loves you so intently, created you, would leave you to suffer, to struggle, to not be in prosperity, health and wholeness? Because, see, that's the very intention. And we have to start embracing, do you realize the very intention for this life that I'm living is that I'm living at the highest and best level and that there is no need for me to struggle and be in strife. But when I'm walking in complete faith, I am in that consciousness. I'm having the same mind, the same way of thinking, the same awareness that was in Christ Jesus. And I want to be Jesus here and now. Let me be Jesus for this moment. Let me be the second coming. Let me be the revelation once again of this divine consciousness and awareness. And how powerful that is when we begin to embrace that kind of thinking. We do this as we build this foundation, and this foundation is one of trust. That's right, trust. We're trusting in God and trusting in the very law of God. That's right. You know, there are spiritual laws. A lot of people aren't really aware of that. But there's physical laws, right? And you may have studied physical laws in school. How about studying the laws of chemistry? We know that there are laws in chemistry and that when you mix certain chemicals, you're always going to get some sort of outcome. We know that there's laws in mathematics. Isn't it funny? But two plus two always equals four. Has anyone ever experienced two plus two equaling something other than four? No. You see, there's laws that say this is what it is. When you add two and you add two more, you're always going to get four. So when we understand that, we can say, I can trust. I can trust in the Lord because God's ways are the spiritual laws unfolding within my life. This is God at work in these wonderful spiritual laws. These are laws that sort of govern our spiritual life and the spiritual realms of our day-to-day journey. They're laws that really govern our very existence in this world. So wait a minute. What is this law, you may ask? What are you talking about, these laws? But it's the orderly way that the divine unfolds its goodness. Let me just say this. The law is how God works. That's right. We're always wondering, how does God do this amazing thing? How is it that the universe unfolds so many blessings in my life? How is it that this happens? Well, it happens under spiritual law. So perfect examples are what you sow, you reap. Spiritual law. You know? As you sow, you know you're going to reap exactly, exactly what you've reaped. So we become more attuned to say, let's let this law work for us. If I want to reap blessings, then let me sow blessings. If I want to reap more love, let me sow more love. If I want to reap more grace, then let me sow more grace. Whatever you desire to receive, I hope you're sowing it. That's the spiritual law in our life. There's this wonderful understanding of spiritual laws that are at work within us that help us to understand even more so the law of non-resistance, to not resist things in our life. You know, we're so good at that, though. We like to put up walls and barriers and resist. I'm going to resist this. I'm going to fight against it. You know what we do is we're actually building up a wall like a dam that holds back the divine flow flowing through us in a wonderful pipeline, as I described earlier. So what we want to do is have no resistance. In other words, Jesus spoke about it in a great teaching that says, if someone asks you to carry their bag or their possessions one mile, go the extra mile. In other words, don't be in resistance and say, oh, I'm angry. You're making me carry this. You're forcing me to do that. The example is in the era uh, era of ancient times that the Romans who were occupying the Palestinian environment would sometimes show their power and authority over the Jewish people and saying, you over there, come carry my bags for me. That's right. I'm going, the ex- I'm going the mile. And in non-resistance, instead of saying, I'm angry and I'm so upset, how dare you make me carry your bags? These Romans are, I'm... well, no anger. Just saying, sure, I'll carry it. In fact, 
Not only one mile, I'll carry it two. Because you see, I'm not resisting this. I'm not creating any anger or barrier whatsoever. And in that, I'm allowing flow, peace and contentment, love and grace to be expressed through me. So you see, when we operate in the law of non-resistance, it's another spiritual law that's at work to bring about our highest and best within us. So it's really important that we begin to understand how these work in our lives. Because there is the law also of mind in action. This is the very law that's been taught over and over again, a great spiritual law that, that really helps us understand the power of faith, the power of believing, and how we manifest in our world. And that is simply that thoughts create things. So what are you holding in mind? Because that which is in mind is going to manifest in like kind. It's that kind of principle that there is a consciousness and awareness. And when we understand that everything first exists in mind, that's right. Everything, you know, even this building existed in the mind of the architect. The design existed in his mind first before it came to be. Everything in the world begins to exist first in mind, in consciousness, in our awareness. So what are you holding in mind? And then what you hold in mind, it, that mind causes it then to express or be expressed and to be manifested. So again, let this mind the very mind of God, be in you. And let it be, oh, I am filled with a Christ consciousness. I am filled with a Christ consciousness. Woo, I have just experienced the second coming. I'm not waiting for some sort of prophet and clouds to appear or some horse to uh, carry Jesus in the clouds on some sunshiny day that arrives somewhere in the world and raptures only a few and leaves the others behind. And oh, what? wait, no, I'm experiencing here. Right now, a consciousness, an awareness, a divine understanding that is available to me right now for I am claiming the very mind, the very consciousness that Jesus had. It's at operation in me right in this moment. So to serve the Lord is really to keep this divine law, this law of right thought, and to keep it at work within our lives. That's how we serve God. A lot of people think, oh, my Lord, serving God. You know, that must mean I've got to go and work in outer Mongolia, someplace I don't want to go. But, you know, that's serving God, suffering and punishment. You know, doing something I really don't care to do or enjoy to do. Oh, you know, I should volunteer more. I should do more things. I really don't want to, but, I, you know, they think that's what serving is? Really? Serving God is really all about the very uh, law of right thinking in your life at all times. Because that right thinking, which means righteousness, Living the life of righteousness or right thinking in mind at all times is what's going to help us live and serve and honor and celebrate this divine power within our lives in a greater way than ever before. Wow, how wonderful when we embrace in this right thinking the very mind of God, the same mind that was in Jesus, the same track and planning and thinking and direction of thought. I want that, and I am so ready for it is what happens is we will manifest in our life what we mentally see. And if you don't see it first in mind and you haven't held it in consciousness, it's not going to manifest for you. So I'm going to tell you this, you know, if you're not uh, every day waking up to saying, I'm living a life of abundance and I begin to see abundance all around me and begin to claim it and begin to look for that abundance, you know, I have a penny that I dropped on my floor in my garage. I have a little home gym I created, and I laid down some carpet, and I've got my workout bench and my weights and my barbells and all this kind of stuff. But I dropped a penny, I think, about six months ago, and I've just left it there. And every day when I go to work out, I go, whoa, I'm in abundance. There's a penny there. It keeps reminding me, you know what? If there's just one penny, there's more pennies, then there's more dollars and more, uh, more abundance available to me. But I'm standing right now in the midst of abundance because there's one more penny than I had before I walked in this room. You know? So are the simple things that constantly remind us that we're in the law of right thinking or right thought that I begin to mentally see and I begin to mentally envision and begin to hold in mind this power of abundance that Jesus always demonstrated for Jesus when he went to feed the 5,000. 
Do you think he had a thought of lack? Thank, gee, I don't know. You gave me a little basket with a couple fish and some loaves. How am I going to feed 5,000? This ain't going to work. Jesus had this mentality and mindset that that which is given, abundance would spring forward from that very point. And that is, no, it doesn't matter how much you have today. Just know that it's available to multiply and work within your life, that more is coming, that there is more out there, that there's more blessings and opportunities for you, and it expands and grows when we have that kind of consciousness that we walk in day-to-day -day abundance, not a day-to-day -day thinking of limitations. So we learn to trust in this law. We learn to trust in the law by working the law. That's our problem. When's the last time you worked spiritual law? You really intentionally said, I am working spiritual law. I'm putting it to work right here and now. And so I am sowing. And I know that I'm going to be reaping. Because whatever I sow, it's going to come to me. And I intentionally practice it. I work it. I work it. I work it. I use the law. You see, this is how God says, I have plans for you to prosper, but you must work the law, work these principles. And if you're working against them constantly, and let me tell you, the law is at work whether you realize it or not. The law is at work constantly, especially if you say, this will never happen for me. You're right. The law is at work. You're sowing this negative and saying it's never going to happen, and you know what happens? It doesn't happen for you because you keep saying it never happens. And so what we want to do is start shifting our thinking into this wonderful way of working the law for our, our good, these very principles, that, and we trust. I love Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, one of my favorite scriptures. Memorized it years ago as a child. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and God will direct your paths. How about we explain that passage a little bit more? Trust in the law, the law, which is the Lord at work. Trust in the law with all your heart. Trust in the law with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. But if you're trusting in the law with all your heart, they're saying, I am sowing this with the great intention that I know I'm going to be reaping. So I am sowing love, knowing I'm reaping love. I am sowing grace. I'm sowing forgiveness. I'm sowing compassion. I'm sowing all these things, peace. What does you want in your life? What do you need? Start sowing it. Trust in the law with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge the law, and the law will guide you. The law will direct your paths. The law will move you in that wonderful way of divine flow because you'll be operating this wonderful alignment with divine source. You will find synchronicity happening. You'll find this wonderful guidance of things all falling together. Oh, how did this happen? Oh, it happened because you worked the law. You really claimed and believed the very promises and the law might be referred to as the promises of God. I'm going to work the promises of God. I'm going to put them into action. I'm going to claim them. I'm going to speak them. I'm going to believe them. I'm going to let them be my dominant thoughts. I'm going to let that dwell within my subconscious, that the very law of God is at work within my life. And I'm going to claim and stand on those promises. You know, stand firmly and let this be my foundation. Because what we find in Scripture is that the heart is really the subconscious of each and every one of us. For the laws of God are written on the heart by man's meditations, on realizing spiritual ideas and the reality of his being. When we are meditating, contemplating, you know what we're doing? We're writing the goodness of God, the law, the very promises of God. We're writing them on our heart. That's right. We're writing them on our heart and holding them deep in mind. So it is when we begin to meditate on these wonderful principles, I believe that as I sow, I reap. What will happen, suddenly you're going to change your whole action. When you say, oh, a chance to sow, let me sow because I know I'm going to reap. It's no big deal. I can be generous. I can be sharing. I can be compassionate. I can do all these things because I know that there's an unlimited supply for me, and I know that what I sow is coming right back to me. 
I know that. You see, you know it because you've written it on your heart. We talk about, I know that I know that I know. Or we talk about really getting it in your knower. Well, that's the heart that you've been writing on with meditation, and you've expressing these thoughts and principles over and over again. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. That's right, to be on your hearts. To be in your mind. That's right. Impress them on your children. Wow. Important that we teach our children these very spiritual principles. How many people have you've grown up with your mom and dad sitting you down and say, Honey, I'm going to teach you some spiritual principles. I want you to just sit in the corner for a little bit minute, and we're going to think about what you just did. You stole a piece of candy, and we're going to talk about sowing and reaping. And when you steal, something's going to be stolen from you. You see, when you take from others, that means that you're living in this mind. No, parents aren't doing that. You know what they're doing? You stole something, get over here. I got a switch. I'm going to beat the dickens out of you. I'll whip you, and I'll punish you. And you see, what happens is we're not following the very teaching of spiritual principles by impressing upon your children, meaning teaching your children spiritual truths to impart upon them that which they need to be successful. You know what else the Scripture says? Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk on the road. Woo. Are you talking about spiritual principles with your family, your friends, your loved ones, your spouse, you know? How about going on a date, talking spiritual principles? Uh-huh. Ooh, that doesn't sound very romantic. Wow, you might lift up to a wonderful higher consciousness and a new place of understanding one another and coming to a place to say, this is how I operate, this is how I believe, and if you're in alignment with that, let's move on because you know it's going to be a great successful relationship. So talk about these principles. Talk about them with your community, your friends, your, your social gatherings. We let them be written on your heart over and over again. When you lie down and when you get up, talk about them. Deuteronomy is giving us all the instructions we need for understanding how to man be a great manifester and how to build a foundation of great faith. Well, start talking about them with those around you. And before you go to sleep, just take a few moments and say, yes, this I know to be true, what I sow. I reap. And I'm sowing some great stuff. I'm so excited about reaping. And when you wake up in the morning, do the very same. Oh, this morning I'm sowing, and I'm so excited about what I'm going to sow today. I'm sowing some love. I'm sowing some grace. I'm sowing some mercy. I'm sowing some peace. I'm sowing some incredible compassion. I'm sowing abundance and generosity. I'm going to sow, sow, sow. And I know that I know that I know my day is full of a great harvest of reaping in return. Now, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 10 says, this is the covenant, this is the agreement that God will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts, and I will be the divine source, and they will be my cared for, loved, blessed, provided for children. Okay? Think about this. As we write the law, these very principles, the very promises of God upon our inner heart, our subconscious. What we're doing is laying this powerful foundation that simply understands that the divine source is caring for you as the child of God. Caring for, loving, blessing, providing for. So write that spiritual law on your mind. Write it on your heart so that you will think it and you will feel it and it will be so important filling you up and you will embrace it so completely that it begins to change your mindset completely. Because what we need to do is become comfortable with calling forth. Become comfortable with calling forth. You know, it gets so comfortable and so many people are, oh, I don't know if I'm really comfortable calling healing. Because if I say, you know, God's going to heal and then, it, you know, it doesn't work out, I look silly. You know, well, are you comfortable then? You must not be comfortable enough, right? But if you're really comfortable with calling forth, I name your health and wholeness. I call forth your blessing. 
I call for that something amazing is happening in your life. I believe it. I'm expecting it. I am sowing this word right now of wonderful anticipation and intention for your life. If we're going to say to that mountain, be thou removed, you've got to be comfortable. You can't say, oh, obstacle in my life. I'm really terrified of you. I'm scared. I don't think this is going to really work out in my life. I'm trying to exercise my faith. I'm really not comfortable with this at all. But I'm going to try to say, be thou, sometimes, not always, removed. You know, you see how ridiculous that sounds. The calling is for us to be comfortable with calling forth, being confident. Oh, I love this song about confidence that Andre Crouch wrote several years ago. A wonderful song that needs to be our day-to-day -day theme song if we're going to be ready, if we're going to be the manifestors we're called to be, if we're going to live out the desires of our heart, we've got to do it with confidence. Let me sing it for you, and then you'll find the words on the screen, and I'm going to invite you to sing it along, okay? Let this be your theme song. I've got confidence God is going to see me through No matter what the case may be I know he's going to fix it for me I know no bad world may say God is going to make the way Now sing it with me I've got confidence God is going to see me through No matter what the case may be I know he's going to fix it for me, no matter what the world may say, God is going to make a way, I've got confidence, God is going to see me through, no matter what the case may be, I know he's going to fix it for me, no matter what the world may say, I know he's going to make a way. I've got confidence, sing it out. God is going to see me through. No matter what the case may be, I know he's going to fix it for me. No matter what the world may say, God is going to make a way. Amen. Now, is that the way you truly believe? Because if it is, you're going to be that manifester that when the moment comes that you're faced before the tomb of Lazarus in your life, like Jesus was, Lazarus, who was dead and gone and buried, and Jesus arrived days later, and when he came before the tomb, they said, oh, Jesus, it's too late, it's too late, it's not going to be possible, it's never going to happen for you, it's not going to be possible, he's dead, it's unattainable. But with confidence, comfortable in calling forth, Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come forth. You see, there's going to be circumstances in your life where you're going to face obstacles and you're going to feel like that job opportunity is dead. Or you may feel like you've lost the love of your life and you've lost everything and there's no hope for you to advance and go on. You may feel like there are times when you're so things are so unattainable for you, your success, your health, your prosperity, Love, whatever it may be, you may feel like it's lost. But you'll need the confidence to say, I've got confidence. I call it forth. Be thou resurrected. Come out into my life right here and now, and I claim it. And let it rise up from that which the world may say is dead and impossible, but let it be revealed here and now in my life because I believe and my consciousness and my subconscious are in perfect alignment. So following this, we become manifestors. We become the co-creators. We become the people we're called to be and to live our life, to be creating a life that's living its highest and best, that is whole and complete, abundant, loved and loving, and successful in every endeavor. The consciousness is that same mind that Jesus had, and it's available. There's a second coming right now, right here, in this moment. The consciousness is available for you if you're ready to believe, to call forth, to be in such confidence that you can name the miraculous. You can sow the seed and know it's going to bring forth a harvest in your life. Let me tell you this. This is your moment 
where the trumpet is sounding and that consciousness is ready to rush into your heart and life and you to be raptured into a new level of enlightenment where heaven and earth become one. That which is in the higher consciousness is brought down and manifested in your world on a day-to-day basis. This is what it's called and this is what it's all about when we have the opportunity to receive the power, the presence that was demonstrated in Jesus in our own individual lives. Are you ready? Amen. Let's be manifestors today. God bless you. Thank you.